He's faithful, right? He is faithful. His love is never ending. So I want us to find joy in that, that his love is reckless, right?
this morning.
just want us to stay in this moment right now. Speaking of God's love, how overwhelming it is, how great His love is that He sacrificed a lot. He gave His Son for you and me. Even when we, even when we go astray, He still seeks us. He still chases us until he finds us. So I just want us to go back to that verse. Let's just go back to that verse. Even when we sin, even when we are lost, he's still there willing to find us. Shut it up. Heavenly Father, we come before you just to thank you, just honor you because of your love. Thank you for giving us the grace to be alive today. Thank you for allowing us to be in this place today. Open our eyes, open our hearts so that we see you, so that we experience you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, church. Uh, my name is Mpato Demangao. I'll be your host for the day. Um, before I get into the mission and everything, I would, like, I would like to ask you to take your seats for a moment. As I said, uh, my name is Mpato Demangao. I'm here to invite you into the mission of the church. So our mission is to invite our, uh, to invite our coming generations to live in the freedom of Jesus Christ. So there are several ways that we do our mission. There are a couple of ways that we do our mission. But before I go into all these details, I would like to ask if there is anyone of us who is worshipping with us for the first time. Would you please put your hand up if you are worshipping with us for the first time. <coughs> oh, nice. There we go. So I'll ask the hospitality team to give you a connection card. Please fill in, give, give us your details. Uh, we will get in touch with you during the week. So connection cards are ways that we get to know you and you get to know us as you're part of the family. So um, one of the ways that we do our mission is through prayer nights. We have prayer nights each and every Tuesday from uh, 6 p.m. at Nyachenda Hall, opposite National Bank. Uh, transport is always available, so if you're free on Tuesday, come be, be with us, come pray with us. Uh, opposite, Nyachenda, opposite National Bank at Nyachendamo uh, from 6 p.m. every Tuesday. Um, the other way that we do our mission is through growth groups. Growth groups are small uh, Bible study groups that happen inside the week. 
uh, in these groups, uh, it's where we get to dive in deep into the way that was shared on a Sunday. You also get to know other people. We also get to know you. So being part of a growth group is, is also part of being part of the flat community. So please join a growth group if you're not in any. So these growth groups are actually four. There is one that happens on a Wednesday uh, in Chesefu from 6 p.m. Um, there are two that happen on a Thursday, one in Sos and the other one in Chuanja from 6 p.m. as well. There is one that happens uh, uh, on a Saturday in case you're busy during the week. There's one that happens on a Saturday from 10 a.m. Uh, they, uh, they meet either in uh, Jumalilo or uh, Kuvin. So please be part, of, be part of a growth group if you're not part of one. Um, one other way we do our mission is through... There's a, there was a new mission that, that was established a while ago. I think uh, everyone thought it died, but then it didn't. It's still around. So uh, we have a hiking group that go, goes to hike... Uh, once, once in a while, I can say, or <laughs> once a month. So uh, we are have, we are hiking on uh, on the 16th of November. So if you want to be part of the hiking group, please uh, b stop by the connection desk, uh, uh, register, and uh, yeah, let's go hike. I don't know where we are hiking this time. Uh, Nyasha, where are we going? Yeah, yeah, this side. So, uh, so if you want to be part of that, please register by the connection desk. Uh, uh, leave your details so that we can be together on the 16th of November. Uh, so one other way we do our mission is through giving. Oh, we give here yeah, at Vlad. So if you believe in the mission, you can give. You, your offering helps us to do a few things and uh, help us to fulfill the mission. As we are giving, I would like to ask the kids to go to the section. So kids church actually starts from ages three above. So if you know your kid is uh, three below, please uh, stay up there. So I would like to invite all the kids to go to their section. As the kids are going, I also like to invite you to stand us as we worship one more time before we hear the word. Will we please uh, lie on our feet? One more time.
Pedro es él. you are great. Lord, you are great and you are worthy to be praised. We thank you for your presence in this space. We thank you for the reminder that you are a holy God, a God who seeks us out, a God who is happy when we worship you, a God who delights in our praises of you. And so, Lord, this morning we say thank you we say thank you for who you are and the nature that you are God 
We say thank you for being the loving Father that you are. We say thank you for being the good God that you are. And Lord, our praises, our praises are lifted high because of who you are. You are a faithful God and faithful to us. Lord, you are faithful and all you do. You are good and you are good always. So Lord, receive our praises this morning. Receive our praises this morning. May they be pleasing to you. May our lives be in worship. May our lives be filled with worship. May the way we live show worship to you. May we truly be those living sacrifices for you. God, we thank you, we honor you, we bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to ask you to keep standing as we read the word of God together. And today we're in Exodus 31 from verses 12 to 18. And the word says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Say to the Israelites, You must observe my Sabbaths. This will be a sign between me and you for generations to come. So you may know that I am the Lord your God who made you, who makes you holy. Observe the Sabbath because it is holy to you. Anyone who desecrates it is to be put to death. Those who do any work on that day must be cut off from their people. For six days, work is to be done. But the seventh day is a day of Sabbath rest, Sabbath rest, holy to the Lord. Whoever does any work on the Sabbath day is to be put to death. The Israelites are to observe the Sabbath, celebrating it for the generations to come as a lasting covenant. It will be a sign between me and the Israelites forever. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. When the Lord finished speaking to Moses on Mount Sinai, he gave him the two tablets of the covenant law, the tablets of stone inscribed by the finger of God. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. You may take your seats. Good morning, church. My name is Theo Jabeda. I'm part of the teaching team here at Flood, and I'm excited to dive into the word today. We're still in our longest series ever, Walking in Freedom, and so we're still walking in freedom today, but before I get into that, I want to give a special shout out. We've got Gift and his oh wife in the building. Can we give a, yeah, it's awesome. We're so happy to see you. We're congratulations and welcome. We're glad you could, you know, be part of this community again. Uh, Gift is wise enough to go to the Cool Growth Group, which is the Josefu Growth Group. So if you want to be part of the Cool Growth Group where gift goes, you can come to Wednesday night, you know. But we're so happy to have you here. Um, and so like I said, we're diving into the word today uh, in our series, Walking in Freedom. And so last week we were looking at how God is a relational God and he wants to be in relationship with us. Like that's what he wants. He wants to be above everything else. He wants to be in relationship with us. And so today we'll be looking at another concept, which is the concept of rest, right? The idea of rest. I just had a conversation with Daddy this morning where he admitted and said he doesn't know how to rest, which is unfortunately a theme within the flood staff. So pray for your staff members, guys. Nobody knows how to rest in the staff team. And so a little ironic that I'm the one preaching on rest here, but um, let's see what God does with this. And so we're looking at rest after this, this particular passage is coming from when God had been t telling the Israelites how to build the tabernacle. And last week we saw a little bit of that, the beginnings of that, of the you know, instructions he gave them with how to build this particular tabernacle. And it goes on for like about five more chapters that that goes on where he's still telling them the specifics of what they must do within this particular tabernacle. There's a lot of things that go within this. So for, 
five extra chapters, he's been talking about this is what you need to do. This is how you build the tabernacle. This is what needs to be in it. These are the specifics of how I want you, how much gold should be in it, how much you know, uh, wood needs to be in it. So he has all these specific things. And he finishes off all of these instructions by telling them to observe the Sabbath. Now, there's one thing that's uh, quite evident within this is that you kind of tend to wonder of like, it can't be that deep. Because he said, if they do not observe the Sabbath, put them to death. Can you imagine? <laughs> if you don't come to church, we'll put you to death. Like, that sounds very extreme. It's like, I know you want us to rest, but come on now. Death? Because we didn't stop? You know? It feels very, like, it's, it's way too heavy. Again, the words I want to say is, come on, it's not that deep. It can't be that deep, right? But it actually is. It actually is that deep. To God, it is that deep. Because the consequence for not observing the Sabbath or not observing the day of rest is you need to be cut off. And to be cut off, meaning you need to be, die, you know, being put to death because you did not rest. Now, you have to wonder why this concept of Sabbath or rest is this level of deep. And one of the things that you realize with the Israelites is they knew how to work. How to work was not the issue. They knew how to do that, right? They have been doing that for years and years and years in Egypt. And even working without taking bre breaks, right? That's what they know of. Rest is something that's a little foreign, right? It's not something you're used to because you can't think a slave takes time to rest. No, the slave is at the whim of their master and whatever their master says, they do. So whether it's working full 24 hours, they will have to do it, right? There is no proper rest for these guys. They haven't had any proper rest. And so now God tells them, hey, I need you to observe the Sabbath. I need you to observe the Sabbath. And if you don't do it, it's as deep as dying. You will die. And even though in this new covenant that we're in, we're not necessarily bound to the strictness of Sabbath like that because two, uh, Colossians 2, rather, verse 16 to 17 says, Therefore, do not let anyone judge you by what you eat or drink or with regard to a religious festival, a new moon celebration, or a Sabbath day. These are a shadow of the things that were to come. The reality, however, is found in Christ. Right? So we're not necessarily bound to the strictness of that. However, one thing we know is the Sabbath is very important to God. The Sabbath is a very important concept, a very important principle to God, and he asks us to observe it even today. He asks us to observe that. And so basically, we look at the, the actual principle of the Sabbath, why it's this level of important. And we can find that from verses 13 and 14, which um, say, you must observe my Sabbaths. This will be a sign between me and you for the generations to come, so you may know that I am the Lord who makes you holy. Observe the Sabbath because it is holy to you. So that's the first principle of the Sabbath. It is holy. It is for God to make you holy. I think that's one of the things that Sabbath reminds us of is that we get our holiness from God. Within ourselves, we cannot be holy. We cannot make ourselves holy. That's something that's a gift from God. He gives it freely to us. But if we don't take the time to stop and let him give it to us, how are we going to sustain it? How are we going to achieve it? And part of the Sabbath is it's that deep because it's a chance for you to relate with this holy God where he then can sanctify you and make you holy. That's what he explicitly says, so that you may know that I am the Lord who makes you holy. The Sabbath is there to make us holy. He tells us to rest because it helps us get closer to him and be holy because one of the things he requires of us, he says, be holy just as your God is holy. And taking that time to stop is something that's very important to God. 
but also this this Sabbath is a covenant. It's a sign between the Israelites and God. He's saying, hey, I worked and rested on the seventh day. Therefore, you do the same, right? In verse 17, he says exactly that. Of, it will be a sign between me and the Israelites forever. For in six days, the Lord made the heavens and the earth. And on the seventh day, he rested and was refreshed. If the God of the universe can stop and rest then we can too. Then the Israelites were meant to as well. It was that deep because this was a covenant. And I think one of the things that we see with this covenant is it reminds us of the likeness that we were made within God. Because it says we were made in the likeness of God, right? So if God is all about let's work, but also let's rest, that's the way we ought to be as well. That is to the likeness of God. So Sabbath, or taking rest, is important. It is that deep. Because it's not just a command, it's a covenant. It's more than just saying, you need to do this. It's an agreement between God and his people to say, you are like me. Therefore, you need time to rest. If God takes time to rest and be refreshed, we need to be do the same. And honestly, it's very hard to do that because in the world we live today, we are judged more by what we do than what we don't do. The concept of taking time away to rest is not a familiar thing, especially in the world we live in. It's all about the hustle. We've got to hustle hard. We've got to do all of these things and make sure, you know, we get everything done. But that's not what God's calling us to do. So in a way, we need to die to that, to that idea that all you're good for is the activity you do. That you can only be judged by the activity you do. Because God is saying, no, it's not about the activity. I also want to take time to just be us without the activity, without you constantly up and about, just us so that we can have a relationship together. And again, this is a very foreign concept to us. And like, as I was preparing for this, I remember at a time, a couple of years ago, it's been around 2019, I was working for a certain organization and I, I was doing a lot within that organization because we had very few people on staff. And at the time my bosses had taken, you know, time had taken leave for a couple of weeks, so therefore it meant their job I'm also doing, but I'm also having to do my own job. And then we had started a new project, which that also meant I knew all my energies needed to be there. And for like a time, I was just, you know, kind of going and going and going. Until one morning, I woke up to say, I need to go to work because we had a meeting with this new project and the people that were gonna be a part of this project, and I couldn't get out of bed. The minute that I would think, just even think, not even like take off the blankets off me or get off the bed, no. Just think of the process of getting up and going take a shower and leaving the house and going to this place crippled me. And all I could do was break down and cry. I had major panic attacks that day because I couldn't fathom leaving my house and going to do this work. And I remember after a while, I kind of, you know, bigged up myself and was like, no, we can do this, you know? It's just like any other day. We'll rest when we come home. We'll, we'll, you know, work fast so that we can get home earlier and then we'll just, you know, rest it out. And I managed to convince myself. I got out of bed, went to the bathroom to take a shower, and it's like my legs couldn't carry me. And I just sunk to the floor. And I stayed there for a time just crying, eyeballing, because I'm like, I... I don't understand what's happening. This is a simple task. I do this every day. Why can't I just get up and do this thing that I do every other day? And it's like, I literally could not do it. And so I took my phone and I called my friend and I said, I have no idea what's happening with me. I don't get why I'm literally, like physically can't seem to get going, can't do anything at all. And she said to me, okay, that's fine, we're gonna sit and just, you know, you can cry it out, 
And for like almost 30 minutes, it was just me crying. She's not saying anything. I'm just crying over the phone. And then she says to me, okay, Theo, I think the game plan here is you're going to call your boss and you're going to tell her that you cannot do work today. And I said, nah, nah, that's not possible. I can do my work. This is just, you know, a few minutes said back. I can be a few minutes late, but I will get to work and I will do my work. And she said, Theo, you can't even get up. You can't get up and get out of that bathroom. You can't get into the bathtub to take a bath. How are you supposed to get to work today? And I said, no, but I can't just call in sick. I'm not really sick. And she said, are you not sick? Because sickness means your body is not doing what it's supposed to, right? So therefore, right now, your body is not cooperating the way it should. So therefore, you are sick. So call in a sick day. Today is a sick day. You call in sick. And after several <laughs> negotiations, I said, okay, fine. I need to be honest with myself. I cannot do work today. So then I, I called my boss and I said, hey, um, things are not okay. I am not okay. And I, I need to take the time out today because I can't seem to get out of my house. Can't even get out of my room. Things are not okay. And the good thing was my boss knew me well and she was kind enough to say, no, it's fine. Take the day, don't do anything. I will call the guys at the project and tell them today's meeting is canceled, we'll reschedule it. Take the day, don't do any work at all. And the, I got an okay from my boss, right? She said, don't do any work at all. But the amount of guilt I had that day, because all I was doing is just s sleeping in my bed, and I thought, but I should be doing something. I should be getting up, I should be going, I should be doing all of these things. And it's like, maybe you should, but also you shouldn't because that's what your body is requiring at this moment. And that's just a picture of how much I fight rest, <laughs> how much my body feels very foreign to the idea of rest, that even when I'm crippled, right, I can't do anything at all, I still am fighting it and I don't want to sit and rest. And I think God knew this about us. Of my people, they buy into the lie that work is what they need to do. They get the identity from work. Because trust, at that time, it felt like I am a useless human being just because one day of work that I couldn't do. One day. And I felt like the most useless human being on the planet. And it's like, but I'm not. It's just one day that I need to rest, that I need to recuperate. And I would like to think that the Israelites didn't even know this idea of rest. The idea of rest was so foreign to them that they said, we are not going to do that, you know? We can just keep going. You've given us a task to do to build this thing, that's what we're gonna do. And all their energies, everything, they focus on this one thing. And God had to tell them to say, hey, I need you to stop, and I'm going to make a covenant with you to remind you who I am, which is a God who works but also rests, and therefore you made in my likeness, you made to worship me, you who I love must also do the same. It is that deep. We must do the same. Because when we rest... We're saying we trust God's work more than our own. That's what rest says. Rest says I am a limited person. I'm a limited human being. But God is unlimited. So even if I don't do work today, even if I stop just for this moment, it's very much okay because God has got it. God has got it. And this is something he asks of you. And you taking the time to rest says you trust God's work more than you trust your own. Because again, our want, this world that we live in tells us that you are inadequate unless you're doing something, unless you're active. So we love to throw around the I'm busy, right? I'm busy is a badge of honor that we, we put on ourselves. Of we have to always be on the go, on the go all the time. And yet God says, no, 
I need you to carve out time to rest. Because when you stop, you can hear me. You can listen to me. You can let me refresh you when you stop. Because otherwise, as you continue to work, yes, he says those who do not observe Sabbath will, uh, should be put to death, but also it is kind of killing yourself if you don't take time to rest. Literally, you get to a point where your body now says no more, right? If you ever would take the time to say, oh, I'm not going to rest for an entire 24 hours and all you're doing is just work, 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 by the end of that 24 hours, even your entire body, it's not even just about your mind, it's about your entire body, right? You will feel aches in your body. Maybe a headache will come on. All of these things will happen because your bodies were built to stop and rest, to stop and be refreshed. And so God's saying, hey, it does not take away from you if you stop. You can hear me better. You can listen to me if you take the time to stop. Because as much as I love you doing all of this activity, I want to have a relationship with you more because your identity is not within your work. God doesn't look at you and say, oh, you are more important because you do all of this work. No. As simple as just sitting and being, God says, you are important to me. Your importance does not come from your work. Your importance does not come from you being able to do all the activities in the world. It comes from you being able to trust and say, God has got me. God loves me. Therefore, I can take the time to stop and just be his child and just be with him. Let him refresh you. So observing rest is trusting in God's work more than our own. It's saying, God, I trust you. But also observing rest or Sabbath is living through him and not just for him. Right? There's a phrase that uh, a friend of ours, Harry from Lilongwe, likes to say a lot, and which is you can do for God without being with God. Right? You can constantly do all of these things without actually being with God. You can come to church and be on every ministry and do all of these activities that you do without actually knowing who God is because you're just swept up in all of these activities. And so activity is good, but it's not the sum of who you are. And when all you do is activity, it seems like all you're doing is just living for him and not for him in the correct way because living for him comes out of us being with him comes out of us knowing that he is the God who sustains us. But the minute your life is all about the activity, you lose sight of that. And so it just becomes about another checklist. So then you can be like, example, that tax collector, the story of the tax collector and you know the Pharisee who go into the temple. And this Pharisee, all he says is, oh, but I tithe. Oh, but I do this and I do that. And your life becomes that of just checklist on checklist on checklist on checklist. And God's like, I don't really care about your checklist. Because even if you just sat and just stayed and be with me, that's enough. Because what he desires is relationship. Relationship with you. Not just you becoming another servant in the house, but you actually having a relationship with him. That's what God requires of you. So observing rest is living through him, not just for him. You've got to live through him. You know, the verse says what? I have strength through Christ who strengthens me, right? So you have to know that Christ. You have to let him give you that strength, but how will you if all you're focused on is the task ahead, is what you must do or mustn't do. So you need to take time to rest because observing it is living through him, not just for him. But also observing rest is obedience. When you refuse to rest, you are rejecting God's covenant. You are rejecting God's command. 
you are rejecting within this. And to make it, yes, it is that deep because we've said this commandment, this covenant shows the likeness between God and us, right? In us being made like God, he says, I rested, therefore you rest. And us rejecting that could actually equate rejecting him. Because it says, nah, your, your way is not, is not the way it needs to be. Therefore, I do it my own way. And I just keep moving. And that in itself is disobedience. So rest, taking time to rest, is obedience. Is you being obedient. Sometimes the question we always ask is, oh, I want to know what God wants me to do with my life. I want to know what God wants me to do, how he wants me to do things. And that's a good question to ask. But if the answer is, I just want you to be, will you receive that? I just want you to stay still. I just want you to be in my presence, not do in my presence, but just be in my presence. Will you accept that? Will you allow that to be enough so that your identity comes from who God is, not what you do for him. So that your identity comes from you being obedient to a God who's loving enough to say, hey, I need you to take time to rest because I want to refresh you. I want you to live refreshed. He's not here to run you down. We would love to think that. He, that he just wants you to just be on the go, but he doesn't. He doesn't want you to run you down. What he wants is to make you like him. And if God of the universe rested, took one day out and said, hey, I'm just going to sit this one out and look at what we've done, then why can't you? What is your excuse for saying you want to be run down? Is it that your identity is coming from the things that you do, that you won't feel worthy enough if you stop for a second? Is it that you're afraid of what people might say about you, call you lazy because you've decided to take one time out? Are you scared of the things that people will say about you? Or is it that you're not at a point where you're trusting God enough to say he will make things work even when you just sit and be there's several times in the bible where god says be still be still be still being still is not finding another activity to do being still is stopping long enough to say god speak to me god refresh me god i want to know you not just for what you can do for me but for who you are and as you know God you know yourself and as you know yourself you develop an identity and that identity will come from God but how can you do that if you don't take the time to stop Sabbath is important taking time to rest is very important so important that God said, if you do not, you will die. And even now, when we're not bound to that, we still know that when you do not rest, you are working towards death. But God wants to give you life and give you life in abundance. But how do you get life if you don't stop? If you don't take the time to stop? And it's a lot of the times we're getting to the end of the year. And so our focus usually is how much have I done this year, right? We'll see all of those questions coming up as the, as the year is ending. How much have I done this year and what else can I do next year? But maybe just once ask yourself, how have I rested this year? How have I taken the time to sit and be with God? How have I taken the time to just stop? Can you just stop? One day is enough to just stop. I think the concept of this is taking time out to say, I am just going to be here with God. Work is important, yes. 
Activity for God is important, yes. But also refreshment from God is also equally important. So how are you going to rest? How are you going to take the time out to just be in God's presence? Will you allow him to refresh you? Will you trust him enough to stop? Will you be obedient enough to stop? To pause and just be with your God who loves you. Not because of what you can do, but because of who you are. It says while we were dead in our sins, Christ loved us. Which means if you're dead in your sin, you're not exactly doing activity for God, right? So then what makes us think that when we get to God, that when we turn our lives to God, that what he requires of you is just activity, 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 activity. It's just do, 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 do. It's about who you are, not what you do. And if you forget anything else, remember that one phrase. It's not about what you do. It's about who you are. Who you are is what God wants beyond all the activity that you can do. So I want us to take a moment right now and think through your own life. What's stopping you from stopping? What's making you want to keep going? What's making you be disobedient to this command to rest? Is it that your adequacy comes from your activity? Is it that you're not sure if God's going to provide, therefore you have to do? Is it that you're just not sure of who God is, therefore you want to earn his love by doing? Because again, life is lived through him. And through him, he's picked you for who you are, not what you do. Your skills are great. But it's who you are that God wants. Let us pray. God, in a very busy world, we may not know how to stop. Or we may not even have been taught how to stop. Because what we're meant to do is just keep going, is to just keep working. But Lord, you call us to take time out, to observe a time of rest, not just for our bodies, but for our souls, God. To take time out for Sabbath is to know you, is to take time out to know you. So God, may you help us, Lord. Uncover what is deep within us, where our adequacy comes from, where our trust lies, where our obedience is. God, help us to see you, that you are a loving God, and a loving God who says that you want to give us life. And life and refreshment comes when we pause, when we observe the Sabbath. And so God, may we surrender all we are to you, knowing that you have got us, you hold us, and you love us as we are. You want us, not just for what we can do, but for who we are in you. So remind us of that this morning. Convict us of that this morning. That Sabbath is your command. Sabbath is your covenant with us. So help us see it as such. Help us see it as a time to draw closer to you, to learn who you are, to be with you. God, we thank you, we bless you for your goodness and your mercy. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to ask you to stand one more time as we worship God together.
you go this week, I want you to try just two things out of your week. Take time to be contemplative. To just sit and think through. Do I trust God? Do I get my identity from my work? Do I trust that I am more than what I do? And just sit and sit that with God. And see what he can do. And how he can refresh you from that. But also, Sabbath is important because it's a covenant that reminds us of who God is. And one of the things God did was, as he rested, he looked to what he had done. And he said, it is good. He appreciated the things that he had done. Take some time out and appreciate what you've done. Take time and appreciate the activity you do. And just say, you know, this is good. This is good work. Not taking the time to start scrutinizing yourself, no. But to just say, Lord, this is my work. This is what I'm proud of. But take it so that I can be refreshed by you. Because God, above all, wants to refresh you because he wants you. Not your work, but you. So I hope you will let him this week. You will let him refresh you this week. You will let him speak to you. And you will take time to rest your mind, your body, your soul. Because it is required of you. And it is good for you. So may you have a good and restful week. And may the grace of our God, the love of the Father, and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen. Remember to say hello to a few people. Have some sogo, some coffee. We've got Mandasi today. So whoop, whoop. Yeah. Oh, that was not celebration enough. Come on. We've got Mandasi today. There we go. That's more like it. But have a good week and have a good and restful week. Go knowing that God loves you and loves you always. Amen. Amen.